people. Um, hi. <laughs> uh, my name is Louise Meets. I am a writer and a spoken word artist. I am part of the spoken word group Words Anonymous. And just a while ago, you saw my teammate and one of my best friends, Abby, give you a few spoken word performances. And but prior to this day, I am guessing that some, if not most of you, have already seen a few spoken word videos online, or have gone to a spoken word event, or have at least heard of what spoken word is. Essentially, spoken word poetry is performance poetry. It's writing and performing poems that aren't meant to lay flat on the page. Writing poems that you intend to perform. It is not a new art form. It's an oral tradition that's been around for many generations and it is so closely tied to hip hop and theater and classic storytelling. And in the last few years, we've noticed a significant rise in the number of people that are interested in spoken word poetry. In fact, it has slowly been making its way out of the underground art scene and into schools and universities and it's even been making appearances in mainstream media. But it wasn't always like this. And to give you an idea of what it was like when we were starting out, let's rewind to a few years ago, um, 2014. I had just started attending slams and open mic nights at this cafe in Manila called Sevs. And during that time, the only people that would go there were the people who were interested in performing. So imagine a cafe with like 10 to 15 poets maximum, all taking turns sharing and listening to each other's stories. It was unbelievable. And that's basically how Words Anonymous got started. We were just a group of people who got so sick of seeing each other's faces week after week, so we decided, hey, let's try to get more people interested in this. And looking at where spoken word is today, I'd like to think that we are succeeding. When I was trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about today, I had no idea where to begin. I didn't know how to begin to write something that was meant to be inspiring. And so I was talking to a good friend who also happens to be an amazing writer, and she told me, stop. Don't think inspiring. Think honest. And that statement pulled me back. It got me thinking about all of the things I've learned about myself since I started writing and performing, and that's what I wanted to share with you today. I've learned that one, we all have different truths. Two, writing is the most honest conversation you will ever have with yourself. And three, Stories have the power to change and save lives in unimaginable ways. Now, when I say that we all have different truths, what I mean is all of us are simultaneously moving in a single reality, but none of us can ever grasp its entirety. We only see glimpses of it. Imagine this. Imagine that the world is a huge, dark, cave and you are carrying a single flashlight. You can only see a small part of the cave at any given moment, but all around you, there are so many other things happening that you can't see. And our truths are defined by how we see the world and how we experience it. And my truth could be very different from your truth. And your truth could be very different from the truth of the person sitting next to you. In this room alone, there are so many truths. And I think this is why storytelling is so important. Because there is no limit to the amount of things that you can learn from other people's truths. But how do you find out what your truth is? How do you put a name to it? How do you essentially figure out who you are? And there are a lot of answers to this. Um, some of you may be thinking travel or meditation, yoga. And these are all very valid answers, but for me, it has always been writing. 
And this leads me to the next thing that I wanted to share with you, looking at writing as the most honest conversation you will ever have with yourself. Because think about it. We all talk to ourselves all the time. We have this constant internal monologue going on inside us like, what am I going to have for breakfast? I hope I don't miss the bus. Why hasn't he called me back yet? Why won't she love me back? Why do I feel so alone all the time? You know, normal, everyday stuff. See, we all talk to ourselves all the time, but do we ever listen to ourselves? Like, actively listen. And that might seem like a crazy thought, but I've learned that writing forces us into a spot where we have to listen to ourselves. It's such a solitary act, if not one of the most solitary acts that you can do. And it forces you to look at how you think and feel in ways that you wouldn't usually do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I am not saying that it's easy. In fact, it can be quite daunting and difficult, especially if writing isn't something that you usually do. But another thing I've learned is that the best way to get started is to just get started. And that sounds like a terrible cliche, but it's also very true. Just get started. Ask yourself how you are and write it down. Write an honest letter to the last person who broke your heart without sending it. Write yourself an honest letter. Write down everything you would tell yourself if you were someone else. Write down everything you love or hate about anything. Write about that night that you still can't talk about out loud. Just write it all down. It doesn't have to sound pretty or poetic. It doesn't even have to make any real sense at this point, just as long as you're not filtering yourself. Because if you think about it, the conversations that you have with yourself are probably the only conversations in your entire life that you don't have to use a filter. And by doing this, there are so many things that you can learn about who you are. You will figure out what you believe in, what you stand for. You will realize the things that make your heart feel most alive as well as the things that terrify the crap out of you. And seeing your truth written down also helps you claim and make peace with the labels that you associate with yourself. Labels like woman or daughter or lesbian or abuse survivor. It helps you make peace with all the parts of yourself that you're still struggling to accept, and I know this firsthand. And I also know that stories have the power to save and change lives. When I first started performing and writing, I did it for entirely selfish reasons. I just wanted an avenue to be able to express myself, because at that time, I felt like everything I kept bottled up inside me would end up turning me insane. And there were so many things going on inside me, and I just wanted to look for a way to let it all out. I didn't even stop to consider that some people might be able to relate to my truth, or that they might see glimpses of their truths in my poetry. So when people started coming up to me saying that what I had written affected them, something inside me snapped. And I realized that my poems do not hold any answers. They don't. But what if the other people listening to me are asking the exact same questions? What if my words could become mirrors for how other people are feeling or what other people are going through? And maybe that is enough to make someone feel like they're not alone. And maybe that is enough to change a life or even save one. And I'm not saying that you should go out and find an audience for your work in order for you to be able to say this as well. Because even if you don't want to share your work with the world just yet or share your truth with other people, you can still change and save a life. Probably the most important one, your own. So I hope that you take something away from this, even if it's something really small. And on that note, I would like to end with um, a short performance.
It is a poem that I wrote through a conversation I had with myself when I was trying to figure out how to let go of something, well, someone who wasn't really there anymore. Um, this poem is called Pin Drop Silence. I am loved. I am sane enough to function. I am all right. I am happy things turned out like this. I am happy for the two of you. I am cut free. I am certain I can stay like this. I am falling in love with life. I am falling for other people. I am over faking smiles and orgasms. I am happy. I am lying. I am Saturday night alone. I am fingernails chewed to bone. I am hollow. I am restaurant table for one. I am fridge full of ice and whiskey. I am, yes, you can have this seat. I am lonely. I am trying not to be. I am failing. I am drinking your laughter away again. I am smoking your breath from my lungs. I am Rorschaching the fuck out of all your new pictures. I am trying to get some answers. I am coming up empty. I am coming back to this. I am coming undone. I am angry. I am war zone bloody. I am funeral black. I am pin drop silent. I am screaming inside. I am hand grenade gentle. I am not blaming you. I am difficult to hold. I am harder to look at. I am impossible to love. I am sorry. I know you must have loved me. Remember the night you said your hands were made just for my body? I want that back. I want the morning I told you I felt ugly. That morning you made love to me dressed in nothing but sunlight and honesty. How you called me beautiful without having to make it sound like poetry. You unraped me, undid all of my scars. Rewrote everything I ever thought I knew about love and softness, God. I miss your softness, God. I miss your skin, God. Why is it so hard to move past this? Even when I know you're happier with someone else, you told me this. But I pictured rocking chairs for us. I pictured grandchildren. I pictured turning every whisper into wedding vows unspoken. Now I am broken. I am not sure I am even here. I am bad poet. I am worse person. I am lesbian cliche. I am not done. I am still in love with you. I am erasing that line, but I'm not sure how to. Let me start with six tequila shots. Add four more for luck because I'm ugly drunk, but I am uglier sober. I am trying to keep it together. I am losing it. I don't think anyone else will ever love me like you did.